Hi, in this video, we're going to look at creating an if function for grades. So we've got our students and we've got the mark that each student achieved for their exam. And we need to grade them based on this grading system. Now, we are going to look at various different ways we can achieve this. And some of the methods are not going to use if at all. And you'll have to decide whether you think the non-if version is a more efficient way to do the calculation. Now, there's two ways we can achieve this using kind of if logic. One is with a nested if, and the other is with the if function. Okay, let's try the nested if solution. So we start with our first test and we'd say is the mark achieved greater than or equal to the this mark threshold, this grade threshold, and I would have to fix that reference, and the value of true would be the A. So that's my value of true. My value of false is going to have to be another if. As you probably know, an if statement on its own can only return one of two results. We want to return one of six results. So we've got to have another if. And I'd say, is this greater than or equal to the 65? If true, you get a B. And then you'd need another if. And you'd say, is this greater than or equal to this? If, if true, you'd get a C. And another if. It's getting ugly, isn't it? So is this greater than or equal to the 35? Fix that if true, you get a D. And then another if. Uh, last one, is this greater than or equal to 25? If true, you get an E. And then if that's not true, you're going to get a zero. It's under this formula, but it's an F2, you get a zero. And then you've got to close all the brackets. So the last bracket has to be black. There's the black one. So we're good to go. Copy this down and you get the correct results. So we'll look at a different way of doing this. I've changed the column headings up here and I've put in a new column. Uh, I'm going to do one. I'm going to do the same calculation but using the ifs function. Now the ifs function is going to do the same job but its structure is different. You don't have a value of false. You have your test just like we do with the if. And you have your value of true. So that's exactly the same, but there's no value of false. All you do is you go on to your next test. No need for nesting at all. So B as over, greater than or equal to 65, you get a B. And you carry on like this, basically. Greater than or equal to 50, you get a C. Uh, then you'd say is B2 greater than or equal to 35. If true, you get a D. Let's move this out of the way. One more test. So we'd say is this greater than or equal to 25. If true, you get an E. And then what you can do, you can say, if you put true in as your last uh, as your last test, that basically means if none of the other tests have been met, then you want to return the next value. So we want to return G2. You can't see it on the screen, but it's in G2 underneath this formula, which will be an F. So if I copy that down, you can see that gives me exactly the same results as before. Okay, um, both formulas though are quite long and they're quite time consuming to create and they're definitely not the most efficient way of solving this particular problem. Uh, but that's what you're gonna have to do if you want to use if then logic. What I would do in this situation is I would use VLOOKUP. Or if you've got a really new version of Excel, you might want to use XLOOKUP. It's going to work in a fairly similar way. Let's just use VLOOKUP. So what I would do is I'd look up this value here. 
comma. And I'm looking it up in this table. Returning values from the second column, call index numbers after the position of the column that you're going to turn return values from. And then you don't use the last argument if you want to use what we're doing here, which is a range lookup. Not only if you're doing an exact bit lookup, you put a zero in or a false, but don't put that in. I press enter and I copy down and it does exactly the same job as these two columns, but a much shorter formula. I think you'll agree. So that might be your first kind of thought to use an if in this scenario. Uh, VLOOKUP isn't so often used like this. It's more where you look up an exact match. But the if you don't put a zero or a false in this last argument, it does a, a kind of a, a range lookup. It finds the value within ranges. They have to be in ascending order. But they are here and it works. It works just fine. Okay, thanks very much for listening. And uh, please subscribe if you find these tips and tricks useful.